I will be forever the myth. You're the king of kings, <laughs> There's always a pecking order. The little peckers never mess with the big peckers. So I'm a rooster, and he's a chicken for the week. Hey, this is John Hansen with another episode of Bodybuilding History, brought to you by BodybuildingLegendShow.com. On this episode of Bodybuilding History, I'm going to talk about the second Mr. Olympia contest, which took place in 1966. The 1966 Mr. Olympia contest, it took place on September 17th, 1966, out at the Brooklyn Academy of Music. And after the success of the first Mr. Olympia, which took place the year before, 1965, the fans really packed the Brooklyn Academy of Music. And the IFBB, as I mentioned before, was really trying to establish itself as the premier bodybuilding organization. They had to contend with the AAU Mr. America, which was really the biggest amateur event in the country. And they also had to contend with the NABA Mr. Universe contest in London, which had been running since 1950. And they had bodybuilders coming from all over the world competing in the NABA universe. So Joe Weider and Ben Weider were really trying to bring up the IFBB to be the biggest bodybuilding competition in the world, and that's why they created the Mr. Olympia contest. But in the beginning, the Mr. Olympia contest was really a small contest. In 1965, you only had three competitors. You had Larry Scott, Harold Poole, and Earl Menard. So in 1966, the second year, they brought it up to four competitors. And along with the Mr. Olympia that night, they also held the IFBB Mr. America contest, which featured the best amateur competitors from the United States. And then they also had the Mr. World contest. And this was a new division that they brought into this big event where they held the Mr. Olympia. So now they brought in the Mr. World contest. Now the Mr. World contest was specifically for foreign bodybuilders. You had a couple of competitors from America competing, but it was really open for those foreign competitors. What the IFBB was trying to do was it was trying to prove that they were an organization that was not prejudiced against people of color. Now the AAU Mr. America was having some controversial decisions in the 1960s because there was some great black bodybuilders who were being discriminated against by the AAU and they were not winning. Harold Poole was one of them. Harold Poole was taking, took second place at the Mr. America two years in a row to bodybuilders who many people felt were inferior to Harold Poole. But what the AAU always did was they gave points for things like speaking and presentation and your personality. Harold Poole had a stuttering problem. So when they did the interviews with him, they took points away from him because they felt like he couldn't speak right and he wouldn't be a good representative for the Mr. America. So even though Harold Poole was winning the most muscular award, he was always losing the Mr. America contest. And it was really getting controversial at the 1962 and 1963 AU Mr. America competitions where Harold won the most muscular trophy, but then he ends up losing the overall and he took second place. Now to show you what an amazing bodybuilder Harold Poole was, Harold was only 18 and 19 years old when he was taking second place at the Mr. America contest. This guy is a teenager and he's like one of the best bodybuilders in the country. And as I said, most of the people in the press and in the audience felt like Harold was a clear winner, but they were putting him second place because they felt he had a stuttering problem. Maybe his racial background had something to do with it. They didn't want an African-American winner at the Mr. America. In fact, the first African-American winner wasn't until 1970 when Chris Dickerson won. So in 1963, after Harold took second at the AU Mr. America contest, he went into the AU Teenage Mr. America contest, and he still took second. Couldn't even win the teenage. So after that, Harold said, I'm done with the AU. He went over to the IFBB. He competed in the 1963 IFBB Mr. Universe contest, which was held at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, and he won easily. So after that, Harold was an IFBB athlete. Same thing happened with Sergio Oliva. Sergio Oliva had an amazing physique, and he was competing in the AAU Mr. America, and the same thing. They would not let him win. They would give him the most muscular award, but they wouldn't let him win the AAU Mr. America contest because, again, Sergio was a foreigner. He was from Cuba, and he was black, and they didn't want that. 
So Sergio took second place in 1966, and he got disgusted with the AU. He left them, went over to the IFBB, and he competed this night. This was his first IFBB contest in 1966 at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, and Sergio competed in the Mr. World Contest. And as we're going to see, the Mr. World Contest featured mostly bodybuilders from the Caribbean islands, from Cuba, from Mexico. So the IFBB was really trying to include a lot of black and Spanish bodybuilders and trying to bring them in and showing that they didn't show any prejudice towards any race or any color. They just wanted to see who the best physique was. So that was the Mr. World Contest. And the IFBB also held the IFBB Mr. Universe Contest that night. So you got the Mr. America, the Mr. World, the Mr. Universe, and then finally, the Mr. Olympia. So let's get into it and see who won each contest. All right, the Mr. America contest, they had a short class, a medium class, and a tall class. A bodybuilder from Chicago, Rock Stonewall, who had competed in the first year in 1965, he took second place to Rick Wayne. He was now the winner of the short class in 1966. Hank Zarco was in second place, and Eddie Giuliani, who was a great bodybuilder, would go on to compete in the IFBB for many, many years. He was a mainstay at Gold's Gym, of course, a good friend of Arnold and Franco and all those guys. Eddie Giuliani from New York was in third place. They also had Leon Brown in this contest, and Leon was another great bodybuilder from, from uh, New York. He goes all the way back to 1966 competing in this contest. Now, the medium class at the Mr. America that year went to Frank Zane. Now, Frank Zane was 24 years old at this time, and uh, he was in the 1965 contest in the Mr. Universe. He won the medium class there. But now in 1966, he went down to the Mr. America, thought he'd try his luck there, and he did win the medium class. You had Tommy Abar in second place and a bodybuilder named William Beach in third place. So Frank was not quite as ripped as he would be later on, but he was slowly making improvements every year. He was definitely one of the top amateur bodybuilders in the country. And uh, Frank also started competing in the AAU, but he didn't like it because they would make the bodybuilders in the AAU lift weights. So you got certain points for how much weight you lifted in like lifts like the clean and jerk and the snatch. And uh, Frank was not a weightlifter, although he did pretty good in that. He just wanted to focus just on bodybuilding. So that's what made Frank switch from the AAU over to the IFBB. So this was his second year competing in the IFBB. Now in the tall class, you had Chet Yorton from uh, California competing. Now Chet had taken second place in the Mr. America the year before to Dave Draper. And a lot of people felt that Chet could have won that contest. So Chet came back one year later and he takes first place this time. Don Howworth, who was another great bodybuilder, wide shoulders, small waist. He trained at Vince Gironda's gym. He was in second place. And then David Shepard was in third place. So Chet Yorton, great bodybuilder. Now, interestingly, Chet would go on to compete in the NABA Mr. Universe one week later out in London. And Chet won the NABA Mr. Universe in the amateur division, beating out 19-year-old Arnold Schwarzenegger. So Arnold is coming up on his way. And uh, Chet Yorton was the IFBB Mr. America winner that year. And then he went over and competed in the NABA Mr. Universe, which was kind of interesting because usually the AAU Mr. America winner would go over to London and compete. The AAU winner that year was Bob Guida, but Bob did not go over to London and compete, but Chet Yorton did. So Chet Yorton won the IFBB Mr. America, then went over and competed in the NABA Mr. Universe, and he did win the overall amateur division, as I said, beating out Arnold Schwarzenegger there. So on this night, Chet, as I said, he won the IFBB Mr. America overall title. He also won the Best Arms Award. And Rock Stonewall, the short class winner from Chicago, he won Most Muscular, which I believe he won the year before, 1965. And Frank Zane won Best Poser. Of course, Frank already a great poser as 24 years old. And then Chet Yorton wins the overall. Now, they also had a beauty contest at this uh, event, just like they did the year before. They it called it the Miss Americana Contest, and a lady named Robin Horowitz was the winner. It was funny at these events back then in the 1960s because they would bring in all these different acts. They would bring in people doing hand balancing and strong men, tumblers. They had a band, and Chuck Sipes, who would end up competing in the Mr. Olympia that night, went out, and he performed a strength act. He pulled apart this heavy link chain 
and he'd bend this bar in his, in his mouth. So it was incredible. So they had all these different things. So in between the bodybuilding, they would do the Miss Americana contest, or they'd bring out the hand balancing act, or they'd do these tumblers. They would have a band playing. The orchestra was playing all the time. Because bodybuilders didn't use music back then. They were just playing to the music that the orchestra was playing. So let's get back to the bodybuilding. The Mr. World contest was up next. And as I said, this was mostly an international field of bodybuilders. They only had a short class and a tall class. So in the short class, Elliot Gilchrist from Grenada was in first place. Bernal Williams from Bermuda was in second. And a bodybuilder named Jermaine Gadbout from Canada was in third place. All right, now in the tall class, we got the introduction of Sergio Oliva. And Sergio Oliva from Cuba, now living in Chicago, easily wins the tall class. Alan Keane, who was a bodybuilder from Massachusetts, he actually beat out Frank Zane at the 1964 uh, Mr. North America contest. He was in second place. And Vic Downs, who was a bodybuilder from Canada, went on to become a great bodybuilder. Vic was unusual because he started bodybuilding in his mid-30s. And he became a champion bodybuilder even as he uh, approached his 40s. So Vic, in this contest in 1966, he was in third place in the Mr. World contest. And as I said, Vic was from Canada. So Sergio was an easy winner in this contest. Uh, he wasn't as big as he would later become. But of course, he had those freaky proportions, that super small waist, those huge arms, huge thighs. So Sergio easily wins uh, best arms award. He wins most muscular and he wins the overall. And like I said, this was the year at the Mr. America contest, the AAU Mr. America, Sergio had taken second place to Bob Guida. So that was his decision to move over to the IFBB. Great decision because he wins the Mr. World contest at his first time out. All right, now let's go over to the Mr. Universe contest. And Dave Draper was the big winner. Dave, of course, had won the Mr. America contest the year before in 1965. He was one of the most famous bodybuilders in the world back then. So he goes into the Mr. Universe contest and he wins the IFBB Mr. Universe. Now they had a short and tall class at this contest as well. Gabe Boudreau, who was from Louisiana, he took first place in the short class. Katsuki Ozaka from Japan was in second place. And Johnny Maldonado from Brooklyn, New York, a great bodybuilder who competed in the IFBB for many years, he was in third place. So you can see you got a field of American bodybuilders and also an international field competing in the Mr. Universe contest. In the tall class, of course, Dave Draper was in first place. Jorge Briscoe from Argentina was in second place. And Glenn Wells from the Bahamas was in third place. But this was an easy victory for Dave Draper. Dave wins the overall title. And just like Sergio, he also wins most muscular and he wins best arms. So another big win for Dave Draper. And then they took pictures on stage with Chet Yorton, who was the Mr. America winner that night, Sergio Oliva, the Mr. World winner, and Dave Draper, who was the Mr. Universe winner. All right, so finally we get to the Mr. Olympia. This was the big event. And just like last year, when you had Earl Menard, who won the Mr. Universe, and he goes right into the Mr. Olympia, Sergio Oliva, who won the Mr. World that night, 1966, he competes right into the Mr. Olympia as well. So the first guy to pose was actually Chuck Sipes. Now, Chuck Sipes, as I mentioned, he came out earlier and he did the strongman act. Chuck was one of the most popular bodybuilders in the IFBB. He was a very rugged bodybuilder, very hard, great abs, a lot of muscle mass. Chuck was also extremely strong. He had over 500-pound bench press, uh, big forearms, and as I mentioned, that strongman act, this guy was one of the most powerful bodybuilders in the world. So Chuck came out post first. He looked great. The crowd loved him. And then Sergio Oliva came out. And uh, Sergio was another fantastic bodybuilder. People were really freaking out at what a freak Sergio was with that small waist, those big arms. And as the years would go on, like especially the next year, Sergio would get much, much bigger. He was still just new to the sport of bodybuilding. He was just coming off of doing Olympic weightlifting in Cuba. He had really only been bodybuilding for a couple of years. But you could see the obvious genetics in Sergio. And uh, he it would really come to fruition the next year. But in this contest, as I said, he wins the Mr. World, then he competes in the Mr. Olympia. All right, the next guy to pose was the guy who took second the year before, and this was Harold Poole. Now, Harold at the time was only 22 years old, and he took a close second to Larry Scott the year before. Sir Harold comes back the next year, 1966, 22 years old, 
even better. He's much more ripped and more muscular than he was the year before. He had these crazy traps. So when he hit his uh, crab most muscular, which back then they called it the frog pose, he just had these massive traps. So he was very, very popular with the New York audience because Harold was from New York. And uh, many, many people felt that Harold could have won that night. But after Harold, of course, last year's winner, Larry Scott, comes out. And from what I heard from the people that were there, they said it was just like the year before. The crowd went insane for like 10, 15 minutes. People are just going crazy for Larry Scott. And Larry was a showman. He knew how to do it. So when Bud Parker, who was the MC and also the promoter, when he introduced him and he said, from Studio City, California, and before he could even get to his name, the people went nuts. So Larry Scott would walk up. He would just stay right outside that spotlight. And then he would enter the spotlight after the crowd was screaming for like five minutes. And he hit all his patented arm shots, which nobody had arms like Larry Scott. Larry was a little bit narrow. He had some weak points, like his back wasn't as good as his front. Uh, his pecs weren't that great. His legs weren't that great. But Larry knew how to show his strong points. And his strong points were those massive arms and those round cannonball deltoids. And uh, he had the charisma. He had that blonde hair. He had the smile. He had the stage presence. And he knew how to work that audience. And plus, he was the reigning winner. He was Mr. Olympia from 1965. So he came out. He did it again. He worked his magic. And the crowd went absolutely crazy. Now, an interesting thing, after all four bodybuilders posed, Chuck Sipes, Sergio Oliva, Harold Poole, and then Larry Scott, the judges brought back all four competitors and they brought them on stage and they had them pose together because they didn't have a prejudging for the Mr. Olympia. I guess they had prejudgings for the other divisions, the Mr. America, Mr. World, Mr. Universe. But this was the first time the judges had seen these guys and they had not really seen them together. So they brought all four bodybuilders back and they asked them all to just start posing. This was really the first pose down ever at the Mr. Olympia. It was in 1966. They didn't do this in 1965. So 1966 was the beginning of the classic pose down that became normal for bodybuilding contests from now on. So they had all bodybuilders posing up there together, as you can see in this video. And uh, it was an amazing, amazing event. So in the final placings, uh, Sergio Oliva, who was new to the IFBB, Mr. World, he took fourth place. So Sergio took fourth place in his first Olympia. Chuck Sipes was in third, and it was very, very close between Harold Poole and Larry Scott. As I said, a lot of people felt who were there that Harold could have won. But Harold took, again, another disappointing second, and Larry Scott wins his second Mr. Olympia. Now, as soon as Larry wins the Olympia, he goes to the microphone, and he shocked everybody by announcing that he was retiring. This was it. This was his last contest. He said he wanted to give other bodybuilders like Dave Draper a chance to win and do well. Uh, but he did not know, I don't think, I don't think anybody knew what Sergio was going to come back as the next year. And Sergio was going to dominate the sport. It wasn't going to be Dave Draper. It was going to be Sergio. But uh, you could obviously see the potential in Sergio. And some people have speculated that Larry saw what was coming with Sergio, and that's why he left. But the real reason was that Larry was married and he felt that bodybuilding was a very selfish sport and he wanted to focus on his wife and his marriage. And uh, he had done what he could. He'd won two Mr. Olympias and he, like he said, he wanted to give the other competitors a chance. So everybody was very, very sad to see Larry Scott go because he was such a popular champion and the people really loved him. But uh, this was the last contest for Larry Scott and he was retiring now as a two-time Mr. Olympia winner. So that's the story from the 1966 Mr. Olympia contest. Another very historic event. The IFBB was gaining momentum every year. And eventually by the late 1960s, early 1970s, they would finally be the premier contest and the number one event in bodybuilding, even bigger than the NABBA universe. So as it, at this contest, of course, Larry Scott wins his second Mr. Olympia. Uh, Sergio Oliva wins his first Mr. World contest. Dave Draper wins the Mr. Universe contest, and Chet Yorton wins the Mr. America. All right, that's it for another episode of Bodybuilding History. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more episodes of Bodybuilding History, and check out my website, bodybuildinglegendshow.com. I'm your host, John Hanson. We'll see you next time.